Welcome back. Now in my last class I addressed the correct sight picture, the correct sight image that you should see and how to, how to uh, control your sight mechanics. In other words, aligning your rear sight and your front sight together, focusing always on your front sight. And I showed you the image of the target, how it would be blurred. Now, there's a representation which is uh, misleading. You will see even in that image that I presented, here's a front sight, and this is how the image was presented. Possibly you'll hear people say, well, I leave, I leave a white line between the bullseye and the front sight. Well, you know, first of all, this is, this is unrealistic because it's a uh, target that doesn't look that way. So instead what I've got here is, see if I can get this into... Uh, so this is what you're actually seeing. Your front sight is in sharp alignment. But that's not how it's going to appear, is it? Because all of a sudden you go to the line and what you're seeing is this, this aberration. Because you can't control. You say, gee, I can't, I can't get that white, that, that white, there, there, bang! And you try to shoot it when it occurs there. The trouble is when you, when you slap your trigger right there, all of a sudden you pull your shot down and off the paper or down and to the 7 o'clock position if you're right hand if you're right-handed shooter. So uh, that's totally unrealistic. This is what we do. This is what every, this is what every shooter does no matter how good he is. His, his front sight wanders around and if it appears to be out of control and well you know what? That's entirely normal. And it doesn't make any difference if you're a skilled expert shooter or if you're a rank novice. The only difference is, is that the skilled shooters area of aim wobble is smaller than the novices, than the beginner. The beginner has a larger area of wobble. His wobble will be just greater, that's all. What that translates to downrange is on a 50-foot target, a person who maintains the sight picture that I described will keep all their shots, if they're a rank novice, with the typical wobble, they'll keep, keep all their shots within the 8-ring. That means that by by necessity, some of those shots, by law of averages, some of those shots are going to go into the 9, 10, and even the X ring. But his area of aim wobble will be in the around the 8 ring. That's for rank novice who keeps that sharp sight picture that I talked about. And that same that same rank novice will step back to the 50 yard line and shoot at a 50 yard target and have the same results. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? for a rank novice to be able to shoot that kind of group and that's because of that sharp sight picture. Allow for your arm to swing around. You know, as time goes on, you'll you'll acquire, you know, more control of your arm. Do some, you know, you can do some weight lifting. One of the things I did when I was a kid uh, was just simply uh, I would take I would take my I would take my handgun in fact, when I first started shooting, I was shooting a, a Daisy CO2-200 uh, pistol. It looked, looked kind of like a Colt Woodsman. And that's what I started out with when I was about 12 and 13 years of age, practicing with that all the time. And I would take my mother's handbag strap and put it, up, put it across the top, and I'd put some weights in it. Maybe I'd, I'd throw in a, a couple of uh, rolls of nickels or something, and then increase the weight as time went on, and just practice holding that out there and gaining strength. Now you can also use dumbbells and you can just simply do different workouts to you know get get some arm strength with with dumbbells and different you know like working like this to help increase your increase your strength in your upper arms and your lats and all that and also a very very good thing to do is to uh, may get some grip strength Grip strength with, not with the finger. You don't want to develop. You don't want to develop uh, finger, index finger strength. You want to work on these lower, these lower three digits. So in other words, primarily the middle two digits. So get yourself one of those hand squeezes. You know the spring, the spring loaded one with the with the round spring in it and the handles, and work on that with just just the upside down, with just those fingers. That'll help develop forearm strength, which is critical to uh, having good control. 
most most good shooters, uh, most most uh, skilled shooters, will uh, advocate a what what's called a, what I call a hard grip. Now it does not mean a, a knuckle, you know, a white knuckle grip. It just means a hard grip. A hard grip is one where you have firm pressure between the fingers and the palm of your hand, and that type of that type of grip will give you uh, a lot more control than a loosey goosey one will. Now, a loosey goosey grip, a, a relaxed grip, is what a lot of people. There was kind of a popular fad that went around uh, with loose grips, and it involved getting uh, physical grips for their guns that wrapped around in such a way to hold the gun in place. Well, the problem with that is nothing different than having a loose barreled action in a stock, rather than having one which is firmly bedded. If your if your handgun is not firmly bedded in your hand, the vibration of that shot going off before the bullet leaves the barrel is going to cause shot dispersion. You want to have you want to have that your muscles anchor that barrel so that it doesn't vibrate, so that the your arm uh, catches that vibration and transmits it through your body and dampens it. So that's the essential nature of having a area of aim wobble. It may be it may be very pronounced like that when you first begin or it may be very slight as you develop arm strength and as you develop coordination. But it's always going to be there. Understand that when you apply proper trigger control, and I'm going to talk about trigger control in my next class, but when you apply proper trigger control, consistent trigger control, and throughout throughout the entire time that you're wobbling, that your shots are always going to go off inside that wobble. Maintaining that sight picture and floating around, squeezing the trigger until it goes off. So until we see you in the next class and talk about uh, correct trigger squeeze and grip control. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless.